Hello world, it's Siraj. And how are you supposed to find a meaningful job or career in your life? I'm gonna talk about eight steps you can take today that will help you do just that. Thanks to social media, you can get attention and validation for your life choices by sharing pieces of yourself online. We live in an age of instant gratification. Many times we do things just for the likes they'll receive. In fact, there are entire exhibits that have been built just for Instagram selfies. Because of this, the expectations of how awesome our lives are from our friends and family can run pretty high. So while it might be easy to say, I love my new job at Airbnb, it's a lot harder to say, I don't know what I wanna do with my life because of how people could negatively perceive that. It can be really hard to admit that you're lost. If you let yourself, your mind could just wander through all the negative things people could think of you, like doesn't he have a plan? Or why isn't she contributing something useful instead of waiting around? But the fact is this, it is completely okay to be confused, to be uncertain about what you want to do in life. In the pre-industrial period, there were about 30 different trades a person could do, from being a blacksmith to a barrel maker. But fast forward to today and career websites list tens of thousands of potential jobs you could do. And the result of all of these options are that often we get so anxious about making the wrong choice that we end up not making any choice at all. Psychologists call this the paradox of choice. Too many options can leave you standing in one place like a deer caught in the headlights. And because we can be so risk averse, our minds tend to exaggerate everything that could possibly go wrong. So it's not easy to change jobs or find an entirely new job. There's bound to be a lot of confusion you go through in order to get there. And that's okay. You've got to recognize this confusion as natural, get comfortable with it and once you do that you'll be able to move forward. Accepting your confusion is the first step but clearing it up is the next. In order to clear it up you've got to take some time to reflect on yourself. Who are you? What are your unique gifts? What matters to you the most? What kind of impact do you want to have in the world? Take some time to be introspective. I keep a journal where I write about a paragraph summary of my day at least twice a week. A helpful exercise could be to write down five traits that best describe you and then ask two close friends to give you five traits they would use to describe you. You might be surprised by what they say and you'll definitely learn more about yourself. Think about what you can't stop yourself from doing. What are your habits? What are your flaws? You've got a unique set of skills that you likely don't even fully realize and it's when you are able to combine all those skills in a way that no one else can that you'll find success. Discover your weirdness and embrace it fully. The more you know yourself, the more capable you'll be of finding work that matters to you. And let's face it, nobody's perfect. Everybody's got some kind of perfection and that's okay because everybody has something unique to contribute to the world. So it's important to remember to love yourself and that's a daily practice. If you love yourself and all your beautiful imperfections, you'll take better care of your health. You'll have more confidence, more style, more swag and you'll be more courageous to do what you've always wanted to do. It gives you the freedom to fail, to learn from that failure, and the drive to continue despite it. So writing out your personal strengths and weaknesses is a great way to learn more about yourself, but picking a career you've never tried before based on that alone is a mistake. You could find that the job that perfectly fits the profile you've created for yourself is in reality not that fulfilling or exciting to you. So instead of planning then implementing, act first and reflect later by switching to a model of rapid experimentation. Find some free time, whether that's in the evenings and weekends, if you currently have a day job, or if you have some savings, even better. Use this time to try out a list of things that you've always wanted to try. Think you might enjoy Enjoy developing security techniques for the internet of things? Volunteer for an open source project that centers around that. How about product management, sales, content creation? There are online communities and projects that will allow you to take on any role you'd like. Give each of them a shot. Try one out for as long as you'd like. Trying, not speculating, is the only way to really know whether or not you'd enjoy the activity. 
I worked as a software engineer for a few years before randomly deciding to try out a role as a developer educator at Twilio. That's where I realized that I prefer teaching code to maintaining it. And while I worked there, one of my many side projects was starting a YouTube channel. And I had to start doing it to realize that, hey, this is what I actually enjoy more than anything else. In fact, I would take a huge pay cut just to be able to do this full time. And that's exactly what I did. An important realization for me was that it's not about finding what you love to do, it's about finding the people you love to serve. If you can find that, almost any work you do for them immediately becomes fulfilling. And for me, it's been the developer community. Imagine you could literally do anything and have any kind of life you'd want. What does that life look like? In order to get to that life, you need to create a goal plan. What I do is I have a set of daily, weekly, monthly, and five-year goals that I write out to myself. I make sure that the smaller goals are achievable in the short term, and that gives me a positive feedback loop, a set of mini victories that encourage me to continue. Goals are your dreams. They're what get you excited to wake up in the morning. They're the driving force in your life. They can be anything you'd like, and meaningful work is one big way to help you achieve them. It's important to be really specific about your goals. If they're too broad, like teach people, instead of teach children programming in Python, you'll never get started. And once you have your goals, you have to learn to say no to everything else but that goal. Just imagine if you had the idea to start Google, Amazon, and Facebook 20 years ago. If you picked one of them, you could be worth billions of dollars right now. But if you tried out all three at once, you'd be nowhere. Everyone has great ideas, but the problem is that too many great ideas cancel each other out. The most successful people in history, everyone from Einstein to Jay-Z, had monomaniacal focus on a larger single goal. If you feel like a goal is too boring to dedicate all your time to it, then aim higher. The more ambitious the goal, the more exciting it becomes. And the key to be able to have this laser focus is self-discipline. Developing real discipline is one of the most overlooked but most important things you can do for yourself professionally and for your own happiness. One of the questions I get the most is, how did you get so smart? It's not that I'm some genius who came out of the womb knowing AI like the back of my hand. I developed the discipline to study it, and so did every other great practitioner in this field. Discipline is the difference between those who fail and those who succeed. It's a learned skill, and you can build it just like you build any other skill, one step at a time. So start small. Get yourself to say, meditate every day. Then add on to it, maybe a journal entry every night, or brushing your teeth twice a day instead of once, or not letting yourself work from home, or getting up at a certain time every day. The more you make these habits a part of your routine, the more second nature they'll become to you, and thus the more discipline you'll build. And this discipline carries out into every aspect of your life. When I was first starting my YouTube channel, it was really, really hard to release two videos a week, and as my audience grew, so did the expectations they had. I was under a lot of pressure, and it was very uncomfortable, but because I had the discipline to stick to my release schedule, Everything became easier and more manageable over time. I learned to adapt, and now it all feels like second nature to do. Over time, my work has definitely improved, and I can credit that improvement in a huge way to one thing, being open to feedback. I am constantly reading comments, replies, emails from my viewers, and using it all to improve my content. Sometimes it can sting, but it's really important to let go of your ego when it comes to constructive feedback, and use it to help you guide your work. If you can do that, you'll not only be able to find meaningful work, but you'll be able to excel at at it like no one ever did before you. So I hope these tips were helpful and the best time to get started on your journey to find meaningful work is right now. So what are you waiting for? The world is your playground. Please subscribe for more programming videos and for now, I've gotta go serve the people I love. So thanks for watching.